Welcome to Purpose of Life Ministries, where we want you to find your purpose, live your purpose, and share your purpose. Please join the service in progress as Pastor David W. Green Sr. shares a word from his series, Calm. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard, North Drive in Indianapolis. You got a desire, you human. Time out. There is a time out. There is a time out right there. <laughs> we need 60 seconds. <laughs> all right, Sister Ann, you all right? You ain't all right? Get Sister Hill to take. And I want you to stay with me for real. You got to understand because you have a God given desire. And if opportunity, you're going to put yourself in opportunity shoes, you're going to have a problem. You already know what you like. She said, no, nah, I can't meet with you. Not by your, no, not by I say, no. It don't matter they married, you married, don't make any difference. You already know what you like. You know the devil is trying to gift wrap you a package. Oh, I'm just going to talk to him. The devil is not you. You ever listen to yourself? How you gonna convince yourself? But well, I mean, I'm just gonna do some counseling and minister to them. Desire and opportunity is gonna be a problem. Now, all the nieces and nephews, you can't get one of them to go with you. That's right, that's right. You know all the kids you got in your family. Grab one of them munchkins. So come on, go with me to this meeting. Well, I don't want to hear our conversation. What y'all going to be talking about? Take somebody with you. Because you already know that you, certain types you like. Y'all right, just to bring them? Sister McGarth's got me? Let the prayer ministry focus. You have lost focus. It's free. You can't believe it. Pray for your husband. You lucky the clock running fast. I mean, I said some other stuff. <laughs> you get caught up. You got to control yourself from the onset. Don't get there and be listening to Barry White thinking you're going to have enough stamina. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. No. Yeah. No. Barry White never started. You know. No. No. You know, start undoing stuff going to talk about the name of Jesus. You ever notice how, how repentant, how close to God we get after we done done something? But we so saved after we done messed up. But we fall out before God after we done messed up. That's what we're really close to it. <laughs> I thought, man, I should have done that. And we got to recognize, you got to get control before that. Because God was with you before he is, hey, don't do that. That's a package from the That's enemy. Right. He tries to send you something when you're most frustrated. When you're alone, when you're by yourself, when you got this and that going through your mind. He said, here they come. Here come the text. How you doing? Been a while. You already know. Can't do that. We get me in trouble. We gotta have some control. The, the real deal is here's what you gotta do, people. Let me help somebody for free. You gotta switch what you're feeling to what you're believing. That's especially for single people. Switch it. Say, okay, now I'm feeling this way right now. 
But I'm believing God for this. Let, let, me, get, let me get over here. Let me get out of this realm. If I stay in this realm when I'm feeling, I'm going to do some stuff. What I got to do is get over here in the realm of what I'm believing. Married people, you got to say, no, nah, nah, I'm feeling this away. But I ain't got no business in that. So I better stick with what I'm believing God's going to do. So I can persevere through this situation, pass this test, and not get caught up in this opportunity. You got a desire. Be real. Quit walking around acting like you ain't got one. You have one. You, you just might desire something different from somebody else. But you got one. You need to get it in line with God. Say, God, now I need to stick with you and your plan for my life. Don't want to get jacked up. Are y'all hearing me? And single, single people, single ladies, listen to me as your spiritual father. Don't fool around. Don't fool around. And, and get pregnant trying to figure out if he really cares for you. Because, because he's sight driven and he's excited and he, he's not going to take no for an answer. He's pursuing you hot and heavy until you told him that. When you sprung out on him, I'm pregnant. Now, the same fella that called you all the time, texted you all the time, now you got to call him. Now, he would drive across town to see you. Yes, sir. Say it, With his little, you know, job he had. He spent all his gas money on you. Coming to see you. So you told him you was pregnant. And now, you like, where are you at? And he telling you stuff like, I'll get back with you. I'll catch up with you later. I ain't got no gas, that's what he's gonna say. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Kelly. And a whole bunch of folks, you can testify, because you've been there. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, that's part of the problem in the church. Some of the older ladies forget where they be. And so we have to help the younger ones out and say, now, girl, that ain't going to work. I've been there and done that. Now, I'm just putting the business out there because I'm trying to help us. you got to get control. You don't want to figure that out too late. Because part of our problem we have today is we've got a lot of lust-filled babies. All right. That's what we have. People just got together and didn't love each other. Let me break this down for somebody. Love, lust takes, love gives. Lust takes, love gives. So any of you rascals got somebody at your house right now, all they doing is taking. You already got the word. Go on back and put them out. So this is based on lust. I just got it plain and simple. Lust takes. Love gives. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you may need to put somebody out. Lust takes. Love gives. Are y'all with me in here? Are y'all right? Some of y'all say, I can't believe this. That's what you, you, you got to understand that. If you caught up in lust and, and the, the drive and passion is going on but going the wrong direction, you're going to miss your purpose and God's plan for your life. You're going to be caught up in scandal after scandal after scandal because you got to have some common sense about this. And you got to have some control, God. I need you to control me. I need you to control that I don't end up in an opportunity, Lord, because he won't put more on you you can bear. He's going to provide me some escape. But, Lord, I need to have enough wisdom to take the escape. Not get caught up. Because right. they told you you look good. You already knew that. <laughs> Why y'all looking strange? So you got to understand this. That, that, that there's nothing wrong with you just valuing who you are. Why well, you, you, you uppity. No, I ain't uppity. I just understand my value. I ain't snobby. I ain't all that. But I do understand my value. So I'm not going to lower myself to be, be some notch on your gun. 
See, if you single people hear me, don't get involved with something that ain't gonna be permanent. The man need to know more than your body. He need to know more than your bra size. And You gonna be with somebody they need to know all they need to know your mind. They, they need to know you. They need to be able to speak to your spirit. They need to be able to encourage you. They need to be able to lift you up sometimes. They gotta know more than your genes out. They gotta know more than that. We live in a day and age, man. I don't want those know they know my tattoos. No, they need to know more than you. where your tattoos are located. And what they say. <laughs> Turn your neighbors and neighbor. Where she quit manly. Thank you, Sister Kay. Prayer warrior told me to stay right there. Stay right there. That's right. Sister Pat helping me from the back. <laughs> we have got to get control. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because we are destroying our own self. Right. With our own scandal. Yeah. That's right. Because we are allowing everything the devil sends, every opportunity, we try to seize it. Matter of fact, in, in some circles, and especially in today's age, you ain't cool with that sweet. I'm kicking it with somebody. People's self-esteem go down if they ain't having sex with somebody. We've got, we've got young people that feel like, man, I gotta be having sex with somebody so I can be cool, so I can be accepted by uh, my peers. That's right, the devil is up. That's what's wrong with our community. I'm not talking about outside people. I'm talking about church going. Young people. Your bro brothers got to feel like, man, I got to be, I got to be hitting on something. Thanks, bro. That's what they feel. We live in a society that thinks and functions that way. Are we serious? People, it's to the point that if somebody ain't there lying, say they are. Because it ain't cool. Even married folk be doing that. Man, I know, I know you got something on the side, man. Well, yeah, I do, man. You see that one in the choir? I be hitting them. Now, he trying to be cool. He trying to be connected. And all the way around. And so his own relationship got issues because he trying to press some other brother man that he got some other women on the side. Right. Just nuts. It is, it is those that we do not value anymore a monogamous relationship. That's like, man, do people do that? It, it is those that being single and celibate, that's a disease. What's wrong with them? They single and celibate. That, oh, this person is married. What, for real? I mean, they just stay in what they spout. Who do that anymore? And we get so far away from the Lord. And we don't understand that lust is killing us and taking stuff away from us and robbing us of purpose and destiny when we need to embrace the love that God has given us. Because that's what makes us valuable. My time's up. I gotta stop. I done went to eleven thirty. We want to have something different. The scandal is killing us. It's killing the body of Christ. It's killing families. It's killing single people. Because you don't know what to do now. Ain't nobody acting right. And in some people's minds, 
I'm grown. I can do anything I want to. No, not to be blessed and favored by God. That's what you're missing out on. That's why God's not taking you to a whole other level. Your passion, your desire must be in line with the will of God. Your drive you've got. I understand you got it. But you can't point it in the wrong direction. And get to where God wants to take you to. Now, I do want to extend an invitation today. I want to extend an invitation because it's so crucial for families. It's crucial for single people. It's crucial that curses get broken. Because this stuff we're doing is crazy. And I know what's happening from the pulpit to the door. I'm not excusing any pastor, any preacher, whatever. I'm hoping you grab the whole. I just told you why it's happening. And unless we change more scandal that's contrary to the kingdom is going to happen. Men, we have to break curses. We have to break curses. With ladies, you got to break curses. It's not about how many people you've been with, who you've been with. You got with this one, man. I, ain't nobody got that but me. That's foolishness. Missing purpose, missing destiny. Now, I meddle in somebody's business more than one person. But I came on purpose because God gave me this word. Because see, I'm trying to save you from you. Because the real deal is if you... Now, who you running around talking about like you? The real deal of the problem is, who is it you like? What you going to do when opportunity shows up with the gift package? When they slide you the number in the hallway? When you get the text? When they asking you, let's, let's meet out in Mooresville. When you not went to this meeting and and that meeting, and it was a side meeting, just the two of you. What you gonna do? Because, uh, let me tell you something, you gotta swap what you're feeling for a relationship with God. And if you don't have a right relationship with Jesus, the devil will take you out. He don't play, he don't play fair, he'll take you out, he studies all of us. He studied every move you made in life. Okay, this is what. And without a God on your side. Woo! Because sometimes when the Lord say run for us, run, you got to run, baby. Can't be sitting there trying to be all spiritual. I can handle this. You going, I'm going to plead the blood, Pastor. We'll plead it while you're running. Pass, but use it while you're running. Do not sit there and play with the enemy. He'll take you out. Give you gift wrap a package and take you out. You end up with all kind of stuff. That's why there's so many people walking around wounded now. Got conceived infants that really didn't want conceived. Got some partnerships that really didn't want happen. Flesh got in the way. Desire met opportunity. And somebody in here, I'm done, but somebody in here for real knows you can get into something in 20 minutes that'll take you 20 years to get out of it. Just because you hooked up with it. 20 minutes. You go from unspeakable joy to unimaginable sorrow. That's what we will span the game. Them 20 minutes, you was on top of the world. As I went to heaven in 20 minutes. They did some stuff to me. They rubbed me some ways. And then you wake up one day and you over here. Unimaginable sorrow. Stuff you got to deal with. The rest of your life. 20 years. And if the truth be told, there's some people in here that know it ain't worth it. Yeah. If you had to do over there, I never would have done that. Now. If I could have done that over, I never would have done that. But it turned out to be the worst 20 minutes of my life. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand. If you in here today, say, Pastor, I got to switch what I'm feeling 
to believe in God, I want you to come. If you're here today, say, Pastor, I need a right relationship because of me. The devil shall not be sending me something. Learn how to make Jesus the same. I want to ask today with your prayers if you might travel with us to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to lift up verse number 1. Now, chapters 5, 6, and 7 really constitute the context uh, from which we will attempt to preach. But I just want to read one verse. Verse number 5. Uh, verse number 1 there in chapter 5. It's Paul in writing to the church of Corinth in those three chapters, five, six, and seven, deals with sexual immorality. And you can't deal with church scandal and not deal with sexual immorality. Am I right about it? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I knew it would come up. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to lift up verse number 1 in our hearing. And it's there that we find these words recorded. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that even pagans do not tolerate. A man is sleeping with his father's wife. And for a few moments this morning, I would like to use for a subject of theme, control yourself. Control yourself. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to come to your kitchen at your house today and just pretend that we are talking. It's just me and you. I do want to say from the onset, if you are parent and your child is here, children's church is available one of the people at the door will get your child to children's church i am the senior pastor of purpose of life ministries and not the youth pastor so i need to speak to grown folk on today we'll talk some real talk for just a moment from the word of the lord if y'all don't mind I, and if you just can't handle the conversation you can tip on out as well it's going to be raw real and read the yeah, yeah. We must be honest, and as you look at our society, it is a sex crave, lust crave society that we live in. It's a society where they'll put some woman in a bikini to sell a Maytag washer and dry. Can I get a witness in here? You'll see some naked woman trying to sell motor oil. Make you wonder why, well, how do we get these two? What they got to do with one another? Because as part of our society, there are marketeers and advertisers that will say that sex sells. That's their, that's their MO, that's what they believe, and that's what they will say. And we're seeing it in our society. And we, when we launched this series, there was a promo back then in the promo because we're living in a day and age you've got cougars chasing our young men cougars doing that oh man there's some real cougars in the world we've got some pimp daddies chasing our, our young girls turning them out making them prostitutes yeah yeah we're living in a day and age you've got married people chasing single people trying to get a hook up. We're living in a day and age we got single people chasing married folk. Trying to get them a hook up. Trying to have me a sugar daddy on the side. And I'm not talking about outside the church. I'm talking about inside. Come on and talk to me somebody. We're living in a day and age you got men, older men chasing younger men. You've got to yeah, older women chasing younger women. It's, yeah, it's a sex crave society. Just people doing any and everything. And again, I want to remind us, I'm not talking about outside the church. I'm talking about inside the church. Don't assume because, you know, we living in a day and age, they might, you know, in the name of hospitality, want to meet with you later. 
Amen. Everybody didn't come today to get a word from the Lord. Everybody's not here to hear what God has to say to them. Some folk came to see who else was here. Who I might be able to hook up with. Who I might be able to holler at. Come on, somebody. And so, so it, it, it's almost ironic when some people move, other folk move too. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to be tight today. And she goes, we're living in a day and age that people do a lot of strange things. Yeah, yeah. And we need to learn how to control ourselves. Are y'all going to pray with me this morning? So, 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 so we, we, we've got to be honest. It's, for too long, churches would neglect such a topic, even though Paul spends three chapters on it right here in his letter to Corinth. But we, we churchy folk, we don't want you meddling. I mean, some of you are already uncomfortable, Pastor. You to nerve, you got to come to my house. But now you're trying to tiptoe around in my bedroom. So it makes some of you nervous, but I'm still here today. And those of you visiting, it's a great Sunday for you to be here. God wants you to be here. Because you got to learn how to control yourself. And when Paul wrote this letter, he was dealing with a church who had sexual and moral issues going on. The Bible says in chapter 5, verse number 1, when Paul begins to go down this path of sexual immorality, he said, it's actually reported there's sexual immorality among you of a kind that even pagans, even the heathens don't tolerate. A man is sleeping with his father's wife. In other words, there were in, in the church of Corinth, they were some, doing some crazy stuff. There was, in the city of Corinth, crazy stuff was going on that even the heathens didn't even approve of. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's some crazy stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, there's some crazy stuff still going on in our society today. And it would amaze you who's sleeping with who. It's just crazy. It, 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 it's mind-boggling who will hook up with who under what circumstances, whether it's a twosome, threesome, foursome. Pastor, get out of my bedroom. No, I'm here to stay for a moment. I'm on my way out, but I got to say a few things. Because the Lord sent me by to tell us we got to get under control. Now, Pastor, how in the world, how in the world could such things be? I'm just telling you. Let me give it to you so, so we can understand the problem. You got to understand the core of the issue. And that is that, that, that drive and passion uh, 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 facilitates a lot of this. So you can't, I mean, just being honest, you can't achieve your purpose without drive and passion. You need drive and passion to get things done. That's how you sometimes persevere through some difficult situations in your life. You have drive and you have passion. And when you're going in the right direction, drive and passion are awesome. When you're going in the right direction, drive and passion. Man, there's people in the Bible who did some great stuff for the Lord because of their drive. And because of their passion. And they persevered. They went through. David, David ran from Saul, but he had two women while he was running. And the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. He had, he had some stuff going on. He had driving passion. When you see him in the city of Haran, he got seven women. When he, get to, he gets to Jerusalem, man, he got a whole bunch of wives. His son Solomon, his son Solomon, who sought God for wisdom. The Bible said he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. 300 girlfriends. So not only did he pursue wisdom. He must be pursuing some other stuff too. A thousand, that's a whole bunch. He had tribe. He had passion. But the same thing that can help you going the right direction can be your demise going in the wrong direction. Can I get a witness in here? Don't fade on me yet. I'm just getting started good. I got to cover some ground before Sister Manisa gets back. I want her to have a heart attack. And so you, we have to remember that, 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 
this drive, this passion that God has put in you, and many of you have it, that single mom that had to, had to overcome and raise children. She done got back already, my Lord. <laughs> Mercy's get ready. Uh, this, 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 this person that went through college and, and didn't know how they was gonna pay bills. You, you had drive, you had passion. This person that started their own business and, and persevered and got off the ground, drive and passion. That person that didn't seem like he was gonna get a job had drive and passion, but that same drive and passion can mess you up if it goes the wrong direction. That's why, that's why church scandal happens. Because you, you, I'm a pastor and God has given me drive and passion to build the kingdom, to reach God's people. But if, if that drive and passion go the wrong direction, hello somebody, it, it can mess some stuff up. Because now pastor, you're going the wrong direction. Don't fall out when, when you hear about this pastor messed up. Why? Because he had drive and passion. See, you know, you know the people in here, you don't, you won't take no for an answer. You know how to sell. You won't take no for an answer. But what happens when that's directed towards somebody that don't belong to you? You got the same drive. You know how to convince them that you want them or they want you. Because you know how to say, uh-uh, I don't take no for an answer. So you know how to study them. You know how to slow walk them down. Hello, somebody. And before long, clothes will be coming off. Why y'all looking at me, strange? Because you got drive, you got passion, you know how to persevere. But it can get turned to be going in the wrong direction. That a lot of times church scandal happens amongst, you know, not just pastors, amongst, you know, music ministry. Demetrius is phenomenally talented, gifted, got his own group. He has to have drive and passion to do what he does, but it has to stay focused. Because if he turns that drive and passion the wrong direction, hello somebody, then he'll be involved in something and say, wait a minute, this will mess me up. The same thing that helped elevate him will be the same thing that brings you down. Y'all don't hear me. There are so many people that are walking around, those of you walking around, anybody in leadership within the church. Why why this thing get involved with that? How they get caught up and don't they know the Bible? Then they know the Bible. That ain't the issue. They got dry. They got passion, but it got twisted. And they begin to use the drive and passion going in the wrong direction. Emory there got drive and passion. But if he gets turned going the wrong direction, it's one thing if he's just focusing on the keyboard to play under the anointing of God. But if he decides, I'm going to play something, make her drop her panties, that's a whole different thing, ain't it? church scandal, got dry, and got passion. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to put it in your lap. You're going to know what I'm talking about. That drive and passion can get the going in the wrong direction. And then stuff gets messed up. Because now you with somebody that the Lord ain't told you to be with. You did it because you saw it. And you don't take no for an answer. And you liked what you saw. See, but I've been conquering stuff all my life, Pastor. And so you conquer people. You conquer situations. Because you got drive. And you got passion. Now check this out. Check this out. I'm trying to help you. See, what happens is temptation comes along. Because I want you to grab this. The devil wouldn't even want you if you didn't have your drive and your passion. <laughs> Only reason he wants you is because of the drive and passion that's inside of you. But you've got to understand something about temptation. Temptation is, compo is composed of two parts. One is lust or desire. Lust or desire. And the other one is opportunity. 
Did y'all hear me? There's desire and there's opportunity. Processing. What happens? It's going to be quiet. It's going to get quiet. What happens when desire meets opportunity? Woo! -hoo. That's why you got church standing. Because at church, desire can meet opportunity. Let's be real. There's people up in here. There's over 250 people up in here. And the real deal is you have a natural desire. Don't act like you ain't got one. Don't be so holy on me. The Bible teaches us it's good for a man to desire a woman. That there's desire that's put inside of you. And church is a place where desire can meet opportunity. Might meet opportunity on the parking lot. Might meet them in the hallway. Might meet them on your road. But desire can meet opportunity. And then that makes for a problem. Because now what you gonna do when desire meets opportunity? Where are you at then? Yeah, yeah, that's the key right there. And, it can, and understand this, the devil ain't behind your desire, that's God given. The devil's behind the opportunity. He does this thing called availability. Yeah, yeah. He wants to fix your frustration. So he can deliver something right to you. Y'all looking at me strange. He, he can bring it right to your doorstep. FedEx it to your house. To your address. He know what you like. He ain't bringing what you don't like. He don't bring what you like to see. Remember, he know you got a desire. He don't even want you if you ain't got that. But what he wants to do, Sister Kilgore, is take your desire and let me bring opportunity. Let me see what you're going to do now that I made it available. Now that I've gift wrapped this package for you. Isn't it strange how sometimes you can get a, a communication when you're most frustrated? I'm talking to the married folk, you know, when you're frustrated. Single folk get frustrated too, get lonely. Isn't it, 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 it strange who will reach out to you on Friday night? Just gonna say, how you doing? today now because you in the spirit but Friday night now they checking on you how you doing you hate to even respond because you already know this is getting ready to go down the conversation turn your neighbors and neighbor I'm talking some real stuff. Yeah, I'm talking some real stuff. Y'all pull your church face down and stay with me. Guys. The devil has the ability to say, I'm going, I want to present this to you at the right time. I know you got a desire, and I want to marry your desire with opportunity. I want to make something available to you. See, 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 if you had to had to swim through shark infested waters, you wouldn't pursue it. If you, if, you had, if you had to leave and climb some high mountain two or three miles high, you wouldn't do it. Why are y'all looking at me, Shrine? Well, what makes it a temptation? What makes it real, Brother Plump? Is it's just right there. Pastor, I didn't go looking for it. I know you did. The devil said, let me bring it to you and let me just give right the fire. He said, I know you got to decide. What are you going to do with the opportunity? Sometimes we get messed up. I said, man, man, Pastor, I didn't aim to do that. I didn't aim to do that. What happened was the desire 
got matched up with the opportunity. And now you've been out more than you could show. Think about it. Let me put something on your mind. Many of us have met good people that we'd still be friends with if we had never been lovers. I'm forgetting this shit. Did you hear what I said? If you had never slept with them, you'd still be free. Because you enjoyed the conversation. Why y'all don't, don't get hold of me. You enjoyed talking to them. You knew they were positive people. But it's that other piece that got this relationship. Now I know I, no, I can't be talking to them like that. Because of what we done done together. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he show sure enough man land. <laughs> Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, but he is on this. He is on this. He's on it. He's on it. He's on it. Mm. Desire meets opportunity. What are we going to do? And so often, we keep flunking that text. Part of the reason we didn't even recognize it. And I, I gotta be real with you. Remember, don't blame the devil for your desire, that's God The only thing he do is say, let me give you opportunity. And the more gifted, the more talented you are, the more desire, passion you have, the more opportunities he's gonna send you away when you're going the right direction. Because he wants to destroy your purpose and plan for your life. Instead of you being on the right track, all of a sudden now you're on the wrong track because you got caught up with an opportunity you need to leave alone. So you got to be honest with yourself. There's some people you know you can't be with by yourself. Don't be talking about how saved you are. I've been a member of 20 years, so saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. As I would never do what he did or she did. You need to go in line. Meet the right opportunity. See, what you like might not be what somebody else likes. The Bible says in James chapter 1, Verse number 14, James chapter 1, verse number 14. But each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and entice. Everybody don't like the same thing. Everybody don't like it the same way. I would hang out there, but y'all ain't ready for me. ain't ready for me today. But you drawn away by your own. Catch this now. The problem is not who wants you. The problem is who you want. What is it you like? That's the problem. The problem ain't, oh yeah, so-and-so trying to talk to me. I, mean, I ain't studying them. That ain't the problem. I don't even want to talk to you about that person. I want to talk to you about the one that you kind of like. Oh man, they look good. Some folks will get up and testify in church. They talking about the person that they, the type they really don't like. You hear me say, now cut that out. Now talk to me about the one. Tell me about that one. You want to help me? Tell me about the one you like. Tell me about that one. I don't want to hear about the other one you ain't studying. I want to know how did you deal with the opportunity from the one that you like. My God. That's a whole different question, isn't it? And, 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 and so, 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 so it's your own desire. What you like that'll draw you away. And then, you know, the devil understands that. So what, that, so what he sends to your door, what he delivers, he already know what you like. He's not gonna waste time UPSing you a package of goodies you don't like. 
the longer you live, he studied you long enough. So you know, this is what they like. This is what I'm going to UPS to they door. At the door of opportunity to see what you're going to do now. Wow. And because if you don't handle that right, there's going to be some scandal in it. If you don't operate in some wisdom, there's going to be some scandal because you have entertained some stuff that you like. You like them tall, short, pleasingly plump, skinny, dark, light, big butt. The devil gonna say, now here it is. And relationships get destroyed because here comes this gift wrap package. So people end up, oh, I didn't mean it. They end up apologizing. Why? Because they didn't handle the opportunity. My God. Be so quiet. Confusion. We end up because we got drawn away. Got drawn away. We said, man, we out of here. And then the devil understands men and women are different and brothers go by sight and so they see something and, and if they got driving passion, don't take no for an answer. Next thing you know, man, I'm going to get up. In their mind, say, I'm going to tap that ass. Let me press 
And so we can get caught up. It don't take much, brother. Be like, boom, boom. Because this desire is hooked up with opportunity. Wow. Some of y'all brothers are looking at me like, Pastor, for real. Yeah, I'm trying to help us. Because until we get control, see, we will keep doing this stuff. And it creates issues. Now, women, they kind of simmer on it a little bit. They got to think about it. They're be processing a little bit now. I ain't playing games. He ain't gonna get me. Three weeks later. You ain't got to leave, you can stay. Thank you for listening to Purpose of Life Ministries. We hope you enjoy the message. If you would like a copy of this sermon, call our office at 317-925-0335 or visit our website, www.purposeoflifeministries.com. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard North Drive in Indianapolis. 